Shalom and friends from across the world. Before I begin, I'm going to start with the Torah blessing. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedishanu B'Mitzvotah Fetzivanu, La'asok B'Devri Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, who commanded us to engross ourselves in the words of your Torah. This week's Parsha is Vayetze, which is Bereshit, chapter 28, verse 10, Genesis 28, 10. And Jacob departed from Beersheba and went to Haran. He encountered the place and spent the night there, because the sun had set. He took from the stones of the place, and he put them around his head. And he lay down in that place, and dreamt, and behold, a ladder was set earthward, and its top reached heavenward, and behold, angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, Hashem was standing over him. Verse 10, And Jacob departed from Beersheba. Rashi says, why didn't it say he, just say that he went to Haran, but rather it uses the word departure? Departure has more of a personal meaning to it. And he says, but it tells us that the departure of a righteous person from a place makes an impression. For at the time that a righteous person is in a city, he is its magnificence, he is its splendor, he is its grandeur. So at departure, there is no more magnificent splendor or grandeur. We see how much of an impact uh, or a void can happen when a righteous person leaves a place. And it, as I said, this week's Torah portion is Vayetzi, which actually means, and he went out. This comes from the verb Yatza, to go out. And where do we find this? In the exodus of, the exodus of Mitzrayim, exodus of Egypt. It's called Yitzayat Mitzrayim, and that verb is found in that. So here, Jacob, we see that maybe he was going to, out of his own personal Egypt and leaving and going out from his own personal Egypt, his own spiritual restriction. Verse 11, he encountered the place. Rashi says, nowhere in this verse does it say what this place is or where it is. But we see this place elsewhere. He says, Genesis chapter 22, verse 4, On the third day, Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place, Hamakom, from afar. Hamakom is the place. And what is this, he says? It is Mount Moriah. This is where Abraham went to offer up his one and only son that he loved. And this is also in the future where uh, Solomon erected the temple. Fascinating. Furthermore, the word he encountered, Vayifga, is, the rabbis say, is also an expression of prayer. Why do they say this? Because it relates to the word Tefiga, which is found in Jeremiah 7.16. That whole verse is in context about prayer, and it speaks of beseechment. And through this, the rabbis say that this is where Jacob instituted the evening prayer. There's three prayers in Judaism, the Shakrit, Minka, and Meriv, morning, afternoon, and evening, that every devout Jew does daily. In fact, Rabbi Joshua ben Levi said our patriarchs instituted the three daily prayers. Abraham did the morning prayer, Shakrit. For it says in Genesis nineteen twenty seven, he got up early in the morning to the place where God, where where he had stood before God, and this is why we stand during prayer. And Isaac, the afternoon prayer, Genesis chapter twenty four, verse sixty three, Isaac went out to meditate in the field towards the evening. And Jacob, here we see that it wasn't until after the sun had set that he did. That we see, as I said, he beseeched, he encountered, and all of this happened because the sun had set. So he instituted the evening prayer. Fascinating. And my favorite part of this week's Torah portion here is in verse 11 it says, I'll read it again, He encountered the place and spent the night there because the sun had set. He took from the stones of the place and he put them around his head and lay down in that place. What's very interesting is in this verse, it says the stones. But if we just go a few verses forward to verse 18, once again, this is chapter 28. It says, Jacob arose early in the morning and took the stone that he had placed around his head 
and set it as a pillar. Here it says the stone, it's singular. But back in verse 11, it says the stones, plural. What do the sages have to say about this? They say that it's a midrash, they say that it's uh, basically that the, the stones were quarreling with each other. That one would say, upon me shall the righteous one lay his head. And another would say, upon me shall he lay his head. So the Holy One, blessed is he, immediately made them into one stone. And this is why it says, and he took the stone that he placed around his head in verse 18. And when you think about it, this Midrash is really not too far-fetched. Because Yeshua himself, in Luke chapter 19, verse 40, the Pharisees come up to him and say, Master, teacher, rebuke your disciples. And what did he say? If they remain silent, these very stones shall cry out. Fascinating, truly amazing. Moving forward, it says, And he dreamt, and behold, a ladder was set earthward, and its top reached heavenward, and behold, angels of God ascending and descending. The ladder connects above and below. And what is this connection? What else came from above to below? The Torah at Mount Sinai, where heaven and earth were connected. The Holy Torah was given to Israel. But what's amazing here is ladder, sulam in Hebrew, equals the same gematria for the word Sinai. And that's 130. Ben Burton says, the Zohar, the Zohar says that the ladder is the Metatron, a singular angel of Hashem, who also is the house of God, as it's written. My name is with him. That's found in Exodus 23, verse 21. And through him, all the angels' prayers and blessings ascend and descend. My name is within him can also be understood as having God's name, the yud Hey vav Hey. Incidentally, he goes on to say that the word Metatron in Hebrew derives from the word Metara, which means keeper and watcher. So Metatron is called the gate through which one passes and comes within. As it is written, Open me the gate of righteousness. I will go into them and I will praise Yah. Psalms 118.19 And verse 20, This is the gate of Hashem. This is the gate of righteousness. The gate to Hashem here in Genesis chapter 28 verse 17. The gate. What did Yeshua say? In John chapter 10 verse 9, He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find green pasture. One more. John 1, verse 51. And he said, Truly, truly I say to you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The ladder is the gate, and the gate is Yeshua. Thank you. Torah makes the world go round without a doubt. The five books of Moses, yeah, check it out. Study the sages and pay them homage. Take a hold of the tree and gain some knowledge. Torah makes the world go round without a doubt. The five books of Moses, yeah, check it out. Study the sages and pay them homage. Take a hold of the tree and gain some knowledge.